Hello, free enterprise fans, and welcome to the fourth annual Highway to the to the Zemus Zone. I am your host, Trick Dempsey, uh, and to, and uh, I am here with Enth. How's it going, Enth? I believe that's a forum start, if I'm not mistaken about which child that is. So uh, it's going great. I love forum start. It's either really exciting and really like surprisingly easy, or it's just suffering. Is it a palum start? It's a palum start. I can't but... tell them apart from this sprite, unfortunately. I'm working on that. I think palum has the shoulder pads, <clears throat> so that she feels bigger. Uh, and we are also, we, today we are watching the second round of Coffee and Chocobos versus Zilch. Uh, both extremely talented runners, uh, well regarded in the community. Coffee and Chocobos is ahead by one win. It is possible that he will be uh, taking home the victory tonight, or perhaps we will move on to a round three, uh, presumably tomorrow. <laughs> what are our other objectives today? Well, oh, we have a defeat Rubicon, which is always interesting seeing the double boss hunts because it means that you're going to be doing that boss hunting no matter what. You can't get away with just doing quest locations. You don't know where you're going to get. You got to find one or the other. And then the Mirasame altar giving that extra bonus to the moon is really interesting because it means that you could theoretically complete this entire seed with just three key items. Oh my goodness! Right, because you could have your you could have your darkness crystal. You could find Rubikant and Vi Wyvern up on the moon itself, hilariously at Murasama Amar uh, and at Bahamut, uh, which would be a nightmare actually. Now that I think of it. <laughs> yeah, neither of those bosses are necessarily ones that you want to see at either of those objective spots too. So normally you're kind of hoping for that double dip, and I feel like this is one of those cases where you're hoping for like, okay, give me give me Rubicant at like Mist Cave and Wyvern <laughs> hiding in Antlion Cave, and we'll go from there. Yes, indeed. And uh, do I remember right that we are running... Wyvern is, because we are playing on case safe not capable of blocking access to Underground specifically? Correct. One of the three bosses that cannot block Underground access, so they know if they find, like, a Wyvern or a Valvalis or... I can't remember who the third one is off the top of my head all of a sudden. Bez. Golbez, that's the one. For some reason, my mind was like, okay, not so, and I'm like, that's not right. I know that's not right. Golbez. So if they know if they run into that, it won't be their underground access, and that's something that's really important to note that we sort of, like, don't mention too, too often. But hey, it's oh, both no. twins right at the start, and a D-Mist. <laughs> we know where it is. We know where it is, but it is hiding behind a locked door, uh, quite possibly cruelly staying out of reach for an extended period of time. Uh, we have the Wonder Twins. We might be seeing an early uh, early use of Twins, which uh, the Twin Spell, which uh, I never get to use myself. Yeah, actually, Twin is really strong if you can use it properly early game. So this will act, this is actually like a really really good combo to start with. Palum is a pretty good character in general, but being able to match with that. Uh, match with that Porum and get through spots by using Twin Cast and not have to wait on his spells to sort of get going a little bit. It's a really, really big bonus. Uh, looks, they are, looks like they are both headed north to pick up a hovercraft. Or not, what am I thinking? Of course they would split up immediately. Yeah, it looks like Zilch wants info. Finding King and Queen <laughs> Eblin here in Waterfall Cave, which not the place you want to see them. You want those free bosses in the hard spots, not the free bosses in the already free spots. But, you know... I feel like actually sticking it out to get the XP from them. Yeah, I think that's not a too bad idea. <laughs> Although, I'm taking a bit more damage than I kind of expected from King and Queen Evelyn here. Uh, King Queen Evelyn possibly getting a rare kill. Uh... It's not going to happen, but it would be very funny to me. 
I mean, you don't need Palum to survive this fight, really. He's the hero. He's gonna get experience no matter what. You can let him take a nap, and he'll just sit there. As long as Palum stays up, it's perfectly fine. And it looks like that might end up being <laughs> what it is here. And it looks like CNC is gonna follow over and also check this, so we'll see if he decides to take this fight as well. King, Queen, Eblin getting their highest kill-death ratio of the entire tournament tonight on Free Enterprise. Uh, did we get anything good from the treasure chest? Uh, I didn't notice anything particularly powerful, but I was distracted by an actual fight with King Queen Album. Yeah, I didn't see anything particularly exciting out of the uh, out of the Damsian chest there. Just sort of the sort of minor things. Charm Rod is pretty Charm nice Rod. to have early on, though. This is also my first time during this tournament in a race I've watched in which someone has actually looted this side of the watery pass. Yeah, and getting a charm rod and a glass hat and a ninja shirt for your trouble is more than paying off. So CNC will also be glad, assuming he goes and does the same looting, uh, that he decided to, after resetting, say, wait, I actually am going to take this fight. I guess we did not comment that they did receive the Luka key from the opening package, so once they are underground, they can, if they're feeling like it, go to the sealed cave for a, a quick door grind, I guess. Yeah, I feel like Luka cave is not ever particularly appealing compared to other checks, but to me, I've always, I've been waiting this entire tournament to see someone just sort of go like, you know what, I am going to do Luka Cave early because everyone else has been leaving it until dead last. So if I get something good out of this Luka Cave, then I'm going to be way ahead. So maybe we'll see someone gamble like that today. That would fill me with delight. I love hearing that warp sound effect play over and over and over again as they escape from the cave. It really is the second best uh, exiting a dungeon experience after the eye-searing experience that is using exit out of Mist Cave. Uh, do not do that at home. Don't try it at home. Terrible idea. It will burn your eyeballs. Look away. Wear sunglasses. Well, now I know exactly what I'm doing as soon as this race is over. I have never done that, much like I have still to this day uh, not eliminated uh our favorite Earth Elemental when he has Mylon and friends. Uh, I have never uh, finished off Mylon first and seen what happens. Yeah, they all explode, which is weird. Where did he get all these dynamite-filled zombies? But anyways, our two runners have taken different paths here. CNC finding that water hag at uh, Fabul and Zilch going to take a walk through uh, Antlion Cave right now. This is really raising the ante on what they're going to fight in the future, because so far we have found nothing but easy fights. Uh, and this is going to get real scary when up on the moon is only things that have, you know, a license to kill. I think it's kind of a double-edged sword in a way, because yeah, you want those free fights to be later, but also this is a lot of really good, easy, free experience onto characters like Palum, who really needs experience to get going. And if he can just take these free bosses and get to his tier 2 elemental spells, seeing fire 2 and lit 2 there, get to quake quicker, that's gonna be a really, really big thing. Zilch finding Bahamut down here at Antlion Cave, so another pretty free fight depending on which way you want to go around it here and what are we oh early darkness crystal and another charm harp <laughs> that is the scariest darkness crystal in a long time because you know i did i made a mention earlier i was like oh you get this with three key items you can actually technically have go mode right now if those two bosses are like on the moon or another free spots Zilch also getting the pass here, which will be pretty helpful. Um, I feel like if with these objectives, you're probably wanting to clear some of those moon spots. And if you're clearing moon spots, you want to leave the moon and never come back. So that pass could be really helpful for that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, is that this is a, a remarkably good setup for a really early moon, just because you can get down and, and, and leave that rock up in the sky. Um... Wow, they've converged perfectly. <laughs> Landing on the same frame, it looked like. 
Yeah, you gotta split up and look for clues, and then at some point in time, you have to meet up and pull the hood off to see who is the villain here. And it is a K not so fighting uh, Porum number two, which is not particularly well, exciting for either runner here. I mean, you've got lit too. Come on, no, no, that would that would be a terrible choice to fight. The lit scared him, and the idea of fighting it scared me. CNC gonna head up to the moon right away, so I'm assuming he's mostly going for the character check right now, but he might still peek that cave value spot to find out who the boss is there early on, so we'll see if he actually does that on his way up right now, as Zilch doing a bit of shopping. Very important shopping boss being done right now. Uh, oh, they're selling for something. Uh, what did they see? Oh, Cure 2, of course. Now, one thing I want to mention is I don't I don't remember the full context of the conversation, but the last time I heard Zilch's name in reference to any sort of racing thing, it was the sort of uh, Zilch is not one of the people you use in a jet seed situation sort of thing. And with a darkness crystal and two out of four objectives guaranteed to be on the moon, the other two possibly up there. This could be something that ends up playing into his strengths as a player, too, so that's something worth noting. Then CNC, of course, is just always a very strong player no matter what, so this could be actually quite the race depending on what's up on that moon. And we're going to get that uh, moon character check pretty soon, I would assume, unless they're just teasing us. Um... Oh yeah, that's what we're getting. Okay, good. Otherwise, I, would, I did not know what the plan was otherwise. <laughs> Scala noting in chat that Zilch is one of the people who helped figure out low-level Z-strats, formulate, do the math, all that. So he knows how to do this sort of thing inside and out 100%. So this is pretty interesting. CNC going to check this character here, and we'll see who it is, because this is something that could really change what they're doing from here. Moon Eddie, Moon Eddie, Moon Eddie. then it would only be children. Oh, it should be Rydia, so that we can have only child casters. That's not a Rydia. Well, it is an Edge, and Edge is fairly exciting. I mean, it is it is Edward, in a sense, uh, given his Japanese name is Edward. So really, we, we, we found an Edward, it's fine. Oh, did I cash in my commentator's curse to, to make a cross-language uh, summon? Yep, I think he did. Uh, good job on that one. That's always the... The cross-language ones are the hardest to get, honestly. I was then, at that point in time, desperately trying to figure out a joke based around the name Gilbert, and there are none, uh, in <laughs> case you're wondering at home. I mean, it's, presumably you would have to break into a full patter song uh, and make references to Sullivan. Oh, no, I, I can't do musicals. Sorry, it's allergy season. My I my voice would not hold out for a patter song right now, but we are going to see CNC diving down this cave Bahamut right now. It does find a ninja sword along the way, and we'll see who this boss is here. It looks like a CPU oh, no. in Cave Bahamut. Nope. Yes, yes, yes. That's a comeback later and be sad when you get here sort of thing. Now, finding an edge on the moon is actually really useful because that means we can have ourselves an actual siren-based grind. Uh, and we've got access to... Well, we already had access to Berserk because we've, we've got a small child. Who is a hero? I mean, there has been, speaking of grinds, CPU orb grinds, I believe, at the Cave Bahamut spot in this tournament in the past race. So, you know, could go for it. Okay, if that happens, you're going to have to explain it to me, because I realize suddenly that, of course, it's got to be the same approximate method that, that uh, any of the summon-based grinds work. Uh, but I've, I've never seen that, and had not thought of it until you said it right now. You knock the two orbs over, and then you let the globes go off, and then you start over again. You just keep going over and over and over again. Oh, it was Ribbon Room. All right, Cave Bahamut would be less, so it might not be as efficient, but it's still a possibility. 
I actually didn't see that race and heard about it secondhand, but hey, there's a Tella if you want another grind enabler for you here in Baron Inn, and uh, Anogo Pogo guarding him. Ah, the Canadian Nope Noodle saying, no, this old man is my friend, you can't take him away. Exactly, here in the Baron Tim Hortons, uh, just waiting for their uh, order to come up. And, uh, nope. Already gone at this point. We'll see who's in the second spot here, though, and that is a Leviathan, so Wait, it is okay, oop, all on. spaghetti here. <laughs> we are having a mixed spaghetti dinner here in Tim Hortons. This Tim Hortons, it's like that sort of like, you know when they have like a Taco Bell and a KFC in the same building, except in this case it's like now Tim Hortons and a ramen shop for some reason? That's where we are in the moment. Lots of big waves in here. I've got to assume there's probably some sort of like Hawaiian themed trappings in there. Surfboards. It's a very confusing restaurant. Zilch, I think, might be looking for a nope. quick reaction grind here. I was saying before the race, I never get to see a reaction grind and it would fill me with great joy. But it would be great, because you could even get to Quake conceivably ra rapidly, right? I think it actually would probably get you to Quake, but also Vanilla Baron Key over on CNC side is super exciting, because we know that Demist is sitting at that Bygen spot, so that's double incentive to head straight into Baron from here. What I love is, is that means that both races um, have had a Vanilla Baron Key. <laughs> You know, sometimes you just gotta stick with the classics. There's also oh, wow, a full, full moon, moon in the shop, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got our reaction grind ready. We're I wanna see how far this friends. takes. I think it probably gets to Quake. I'm not sure how much further than that. Poor I'm going down is a bit unfortunate. <laughs> uh, and Poor is not the hero, so uh, sadly, no Quake from this fight. Only getting uh, the virus it, off of that one, so might decide to take another one or nope, just gonna be happy with the virus. Probably wise to just be happy with the virus at this point. My favorite part is that I once again switched the children. It took me like months of doing randomizer to remember which one was which. I started like at some point in time, like, okay, you need to memorize this. Pay very close attention to which child is which. So CNC right now are going up the back way into Baron Castle to finally fight. Oh, right, we know who's there. Uh, the Mist Dragon uh, unlocking uh, a gift from uh, Rydia's dear departed mom. Uh, and yeah. getting us another key item check. And I feel like this is pretty much the only play that makes sense of the two, although he still hasn't gone down Antlion and gotten that pass yet. But I believe he should, probably by the time he's out of here, or very shortly after, have exit for going down Antlion Cave, and underground access has got to be coming soon here. It's got to be either here or on Mount Ordeals, so you might as well just head in here right now. Yeah, there's basically no incentive to Mount Ordeals like, uh, at present. Uh, well, we have Tella. What am I thinking? <laughs> yeah, but I'm not even sure in this particular seed when you have an edge already um, and you have, like, unslingshotable mages, if you care so much about that, those Tella spells and possibly doing, like, a D-Machine grind later, I feel like Sirens are going to be definitely your better choice here because you can't I mean, you probably can slingshot a hero if you try really hard and go in with that idea completely from the start, but not from this position. And as we speak, Zilch decides to go up the mountain. This is really interesting, actually, because Zilch going up here, one of these two is going to find underground access. It's either going to be CNC on this yet another free fight here and the three dark imps and a trench Those coat on imps? the throne here. Three dark imps in an expensive cape posing as, posing as king. 
King Vincent Dark Impman here, ready to go. King Dark Impman was a fake? Who would have guessed? Oh, speaking of piles and piles of enemies all at once, we have dolls! You know, I am actually starting to get legitimately concerned at the number of really easy bosses we've seen so far. Because all that's left, really, just off the top of my head that's free at the moment, is um, the two different guard fights, Baron Guards and Kaipo Guards. And then I guess Pain Man technically counts as long as you don't find him in too spicy of a location. We don't have a Cecil to make karate free yet, so we're burning through all of these free fights when we're gonna have to probably do two different moon checks, which is interesting. And hey, oh, there's a there's a squid from behind here. At least a not a not free fight. Although at these levels, they're they're not in danger from from Octomanus. Not free, going to do a bit of damage and at risk of punching Porum down, but it looks like this is going to be just fine. And yeah, that virus hitting for 1125 wow. and Edge hitting for, I think it was 800, this is going to be over pretty quickly. These imps are causing much more trouble than I expected. Well, That was a three, not an eight. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about dark imps, is they're that sort of like free in quotation marks kind of fight where they can be really difficult and hey how about second edward that's our, our first edward oh oh i see what you did we've it's got covered. we've got one of these parties that's it, it's a party that you have do you really want the children Tella Edward and other Edward party here. I mean, sure, but still. Uh, we're about to see, by the way, what is this Mount Ordeals key item, and they're going to be checking this at basically the same time, so uh, this is a tense moment here. All right, I'm looking left. Oh, Magma Key on Ordeals. A root underground, hooray, and a rat tail. No hook, though. Well, I think the big question is how long oh does it gosh, take CNC to go? What is with all these free bosses? <laughs> Palum just being like, it's time, guards. Guards like, yep, it's time. We're gonna see the we're gonna see the Baron guards down here on the true throne will be other king two Baron guards. <laughs> And that'll that'll show us with the free bosses thing here. Please no. be Baron Guards. Oh, that's not Baron Guards. Please be Wyvern. <gasps> it's Christmas. It's an objective, and that's an entangle, which is not too bad of a thing to have for that Witchburn flag. So that's a pretty good one to see there. Only gonna paralyze some characters, not all of them. Might be something worth coming back to later, but, you know, for the most part, it's not too scary. I realize it's a consumable, but getting a free cabin right there in town is pretty nice. Oh, and an earth crystal. Opening that's, up delicious character checks. That's real interesting to me, because I feel like that's going to push CNC further down that path. He's already committed to going down Baron... He's already basically gone at this point. He might as well keep going, but that's going to push him further away from the underground access, further away from going back to that antlion cave and finding that pass. This could be one of those things where the seed sort of pushes him away from a path that might help him, but it really does depend on what's here at Tower of Zod. And we're also about to see if we're going to get a treasury check here. It looks like yes. I love that there's just this dancer down in the basement, like, for some reason. Well, Strength Power Rank. Glass 2 is nice. Another Ninja Sword, pretty nice too. Strength Ring, pretty good. Zeus Gauntlet's good. Mm. That's kind of like... It's... Yeah, it is. 
that's a treasury that occurred. It doesn't stick out as being particularly bad. It doesn't stick out as being particularly good. It was decent. It had a lot of dragoon helmets for, for knights not appearing in this picture. Two-thirds of a healer if, uh, if Rydia were in the party. It's not the treasure you want, but it's possibly the treasure you deserve in this case. CNC going to go back and do a little bit of shopping here before heading up Tower of Zot, which I'm assuming is going to be his next play from here. It seems like it would be a bit odd to come over here and then go somewhere else, although it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, going to pick up some Ether 2s here. Also, that Hourglass 2, the uh, forgotten... Uh, bonus there. Not going to help really with any bosses because you've pretty much seen all the bosses that Hourglass 2 is useful for out of the <laughs> pool except one. But that is a very very good possible like go down and get some uh, dragons at the bottom of Cave Bahamut sort of moment. And it looks like CNC is actually going to head over to Ordeals here. Hooray! I need a bonk counter for the number of times that people crash into the side of uh, the mountain. It's always that, or the way back above ground uh, from, from like, the underworld, where you're like, okay, going up, and then this airship sinks down, you're like, oh no, I hit that one tile you can land on here. See that a bit around uh, the access to the actual Rat Tail Cave, which I'm certain is not called that. That doesn't make any sense. The tail turn-in. The Adamant Grotto in later things. I think it's Adamant Cave in this version. Most, which is a superior name because nobody likes the word grotto. Ah, uh, uh, you're you're incorrect. Grotto is an excellent word. Oh pleasant no! <laughs> say it's unpleasant to think about. It's perfect. I mean, it is very descriptive. But CNC gonna come up here and get the good news that this is basically oops, all free bosses up here and get that magma key. Um, but it is interesting to note that Zilch got that magma key and decided, you know what, I'm going to keep clearing overworld checks. I'm not going to bother going underground, which is a very interesting play here. Yeah, I'm a little surprised to not go underground and check some freebies. Uh, but he may not have realized that that P's diverged uh, because it because neither of them have, I felt like have taken like particularly radical choices. Um, and so it's possible that Zilch is just feeling like being thorough? Yeah, it is possible. I just... The only reason it sticks out to me is because I feel like in most races I've seen in this tournament, when someone gets a magma key, one mm. of the runners is going to run down and check it immediately. <laughs> That's fair. So we'll see. CNC might at this point in time, but Zilch going to go into this Demist fight. CNC in this Octoman fight. Both pretty easy and formulaic fights at this point. Yeah, I'm entertained by how many limbs the Octomams had at the end of both fights. It's an interesting way for me. I, I always think of it as a way of measuring if you were OP when you encountered the Octomam, is does she have all of her arms or their arms? I have no idea what gender the Octoman is. Yeah, that is a good question. It's not one that I need to know the answer to, but it is a good question. Growing up, I consistently misread it as Octo Mom, and so I thought Mom Bomb and Octo Mom, and there's just a surprising amount of, like, mother fighting, because you also get King Queen Evelyn. But uh, as it turns out, I was, I was wrong as a child, as I often was. Yeah, I mean... Who hasn't misread something like that as a child? I had that sort of problem with some things in 6, which is the one I played at that point in time. But this is going to be another uh, quick fight over on CNC's side. Just going to knock out all of them and let the uh, officer retreat, and that'll be pretty much it. Although, actually, he might get the kill on the officer at this point. <gasps> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm noticing, I, I noticed... Uh... Over on Zilch's side, uh, he checked that treasure room inside of ba uh, in Baron Castle and found a lightsaber, absolutely guaranteeing that Cecil is not in this scene. No matter what people say in the chat. 100%. No way there's a Cecil, but i almost feeling like if we didn't see CNC go to Zot now, we might not see Zot for a little bit. 
I don't know. It's hard to parse where these routes are going at this point, because I don't want to say they're like weird routes, but they are sort of off the standard for what I've seen for this tournament so far, which is really interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, CNC just got Magma, did not go to Zot earlier when actually at Terraria. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if CNC is going to go cash in that Magma key. Yeah, absolutely at this point. You might as well. You've got the two freebies ready to go, and this seed can end in a quick moment at any point in time at this point. So really, you might as well go for it. The only thing is that would really tip me towards wanting to do Zot personally if I were in either of these runners' shoes is the fact that my party is not great at this point. It's... <laughs> Like a solid 6 out of 10. We want to get it a bit closer, like a 7 or an 8 here. Uh, given that we have unique characters or no dupes, I, I, this is really hard for me to think of a party that I would be more nervous going to fight Z with. You could have, instead of the Edge, you could have Iridia. That's, That's... about how you would make it a little bit more Z unfriendly. And not because Rydia is like bad or anything, but because Rydia doesn't get HP and you need HP at some point in time, although you could just nerf everything too. So I guess that's a thing. Uh, I am I am doomed in my runs because uh, Rydia is my sweet baby girl. I love her so very, very much and want her in my party all the time. So I was sitting there going, oh, of course, you just replaced the edge with the Rydia and then, well, you're doomed. But at least you've got all the children in one place. Exactly. And then you just need to not do Dwarf Castle and you have Grandpa babysitting. And that's the entire concept of your party for the rest of this. Uh, we've got CNC going... What? Okay, come on now. Why do you... Do oh, okay. That makes sense, CNC. Fine. <laughs> it's, it's almost like... I, I feel like I'm being trolled a little bit here with this almost. <laughs> I but he's going to go get that are. pass, so it's going to pay off for him. Alright, next big question. Can Zilch get through this Wyvern fight right now? Nope, going to reset no, out. No, not at all. <laughs> when I didn't see a reset, I was like, that's, uh, that's three seconds longer than I expected this to last. Are we doing this? I think you wanted to see what the witch burn was, and it was just like 100% confirming what it was, so we did again see it as Entangle, and it looks like that's one of the ones that only hits one row or the other, so it won't hit the whole party too, so it'll be a lot better than some of the alternatives, honestly. Yeah, witch burn is, continues to, to leave me confused, because I still always have the uh, thought of seeing Wyvern and going, well, I guess I just die now. Uh, and then it, it doesn't happen most of the time. It's very weird, the witch burn flag, just because I'm not used <gasps> to it. Hello! Ooh, that's oh, a... in Mist Cave. So we know where both of our boss hunts are. We're actually in go mode. 100%. Zilch knows where Wyvern is, knows where Rubikint is, has that darkness crystal so he can go up, do Cave Bahamut, do Marasame Altar. This is 100% go mode at this point. Absolutely, and CNC has not checked Mist Cave, and I do not know when he is likely to do that. I think if he's going over and cracking an egg, he's committing to a good amount of time spent underground so this could be quite bad at this point for yeah. CNC's side. The question at this point is does Zilch basically just say okay I'm 100% in go mode I'm going to just accept this party for what it is and go and do a grind and we'll see what happens when we get to Z. If anyone can do it he's definitely one of the best candidates to be able to pull that off. And this would be like a straight up reflect strats party at this point? I guess? It's very reflect strats, question mark, but I think you probably would go hybrid, Porum, Palum, and Edge, depending on how you're feeling about how your Edge is built at this point. We've got a lot of Edge gear, but not necessarily the weapons. Uh, I... 
Moonblaze Wolf has given me a, a, a terrifying chill in chat at the idea of doing a three-man Z fight with Porum, Palum, and Edge. Uh, and then somebody come adding at level 30, and I just cannot imagine it. And uh, if that is the level of play we are going to see, we are in for an, a delightful evening. Though a I'm, brief one. I'm not sure it's 100% possible to do that on these flags at the moment. So I, we'll I see what Zilch does. Now. I'm wondering if Zilch might consider trying to do a quick check anywhere that might give a character but I gotta think that he's just gonna say you know what this is the party I got right now treasure re then zot I mean I think this is like the big moment of this seed you kind of have these moments at any point in time but whether or not he does zot could be a big factor in who wins this race and I'm not uh, sure which way that goes at this point, honestly. We've got Yang hiding uh, hiding as the first fight in the Crystal Room at Dwarf Castle. We do not have a Cecil to knock him out. Yeah, he's gonna do a little dance here and uh, go from there. Zilch gonna exit out here, so I'm gonna assume he's gonna go set up his grind at this point, and I gotta think if you're at this part, you're probably gonna go ahead and just go Sirens, but he could surprise me with the D-Machine instead. I'm not 100% sure where you go from here if you're in Zilch's shoes. Looks like he's gonna do, go do a little bit more shopping first, though. selling the drain spear when you have an edge i feel i'm shocked shocked and dismayed yeah i think his strategy is probably gonna be berserk edge and just let him swing and don't bother darting for the most part Ooh, selling the so. strength ring though which i would expect to use for that well he does have a zeus gauntlet as well oh. so probably planning on putting that on the edge and just edward is there uh, CNC. We have a cane. Ooh, that's spicy. That is spicy. Finally, that that pile of dragoon helmets. Yeah, we have no cane weapons though. <laughs> that that's uh, a problem. Kane, Kane, how do you feel about uh, punching your way to victory? I mean, he starts with the wind spear, correct? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. Can we just downgrade that, though? Can we get, like, the spear spear strats here? That's what I'm looking for. I for, I keep forgetting that there is such a thing as just a spear. Okay, good. He does start with spear spear. We're in spear spear strats now. Yes! I know he has a poison axe, but it's not a spear spear. <laughs> I will say, finding the Mega Sisters in that spot is actually pretty great, because it would be terrible to have the Mega Sisters instead of a Moon spot. In my experience, that's a really rough thing. So seeing them in the second stage of this uh, Dwarf Castle fight is, is very useful. Yeah, and that's another good boss to have out of the way there. Oh, there's a pan. This is... Well, Here's the fancy. thing, is like... Everything good that CNC finds that would normally be really exciting is pulling him further away from that go mode Zilch already has, and that's almost a little bit scary right now. Uh, here's what here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna try to reinvoke a commentator's curse. My hope is is to get them both going in to the uh, Zemus fight, but uh, Coffee and Chocobos having not killed Rubicon, so that we've got different objectives completed. I mean, it is possible we get. I mean, we don't get the pan bonk checks. So that pan is really just an IOU for only one key item in this case. And also, to answer the question in chat, where was Ruby? Ruby was in the mist cave right at the start. So, a good boss hunt lesson for you. Make sure you're checking that early on. CNC might have been planning on bundling that in later, and this might be one of the few cases in which that doesn't work out for him. But we'll see it from here. It's pretty interesting at this point this is this is a very tense race it's just that it's at the moment tense for like 15 20 minutes from now oh i've uh i've forgotten do i remember right that cry actually increases the chance of theft absolutely 
So I might as well explain this while CNC's going to do these turn-ins real quick, but Cry was initially intended to affect this mechanic where enemies could run away, and then they got rid of that mechanic. And so now the only thing it affects, for some reason, is Steel Rains, which is interesting, but also means that that poor Imagish combo is great for the Siren Strats. We're about to see who these uh, Sheila checks, well, what these Sheila checks end up being. There's a Crystal Ring. Wonderful, thanks Sheila. Wonderful, love it. And Pigtail, uh, if we ever get that hook, uh, the Adamant Grotto is going to be delightful. See, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing for CNC. It's like, like you mentioned, like, we probably want Legend Sword and Adamant, but at the same time, like, maybe he goes and checks Mist Cave at some point in time soon because he's running out of other options and this pan didn't really give him anything new. I mean, my terrible feeling is that that Luka Key has been there this whole time. Um... And that might be calling, or we're just gonna do, uh, Keyless t oh, yeah, Keyless Tower. That is not the play I expected at all. Oh. You know, you could be considering stealing Sirens, and then, like, going up Tower, checking the Tower boss, maybe run down Luka Cave, that gives you 10 key items and then you get 10 from there. I don't think he quite has the levels for the top of tower boss spot, honestly, so I wouldn't be surprised if this is just stealing sirens because that spot is very tanky, very deceptively annoying to deal with, um, but we'll see. And Zilch, meanwhile, done with his siren stealing, going to be heading out here. We'll see if he goes and grinds immediately or if he has something else up his sleeve. It's time to scramble eggs. Yeah, chat saying, you know, doesn't know if CNC will pop them right now, so close to tanky items. And the other thing is that CNC doesn't have go mode because he doesn't know that that Rubicon is there. Knows that Wyvern's there. Knows he has three out of four objectives. So at this point in time, his math is a little bit different. He's probably going to feel a lot more confident in holding off because he doesn't know that that Rubicon's already been found over on Zilch's side. Yeah, one and... has to assume that CNC is sitting here trying to figure out how to go up to, like, am I ready to go up to fight some moon fights? Um, or other, you know, high level bosses at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's another way of thinking about it, too, is, um... You could just say, I have a pass in hand, I got two moon objectives. Even though it's only eight key items, I want to go and try and do a quick grind and then full clear the moon for the rest of it, and maybe skip a few sirens along the way. That will be a little bit inefficient, but for the most part, it is something that you could do. Well, we're just going to kind of have to wait and see at this point, but I kind of expect right now he's just stealing these sirens and then is going to try and keep clearing things, maybe pop a few of them now to get a few little levels in the meantime. I had prepped this bit where I was going to count the number of D-Machines that were killed during this run by actually naming all of them and just kind of going up letters of the alphabet as a way of counting. And uh, I think that I think I prepared that bit to no avail. Yeah, and that's something I kind of want to hit on about these flags is like, I feel like there's a tendency to sort of be like, oh, level grinds, don't like level grinds. No one really likes level grinds. They're just sort of a part of the part of the thing, though. They're very efficient, very good play, and honestly, they're a lot faster than they can seem at times. But one of the things I want to talk about with this flag set is we've seen so many different types of grinding up in terms of levels here that it's really interesting when we see these situations in which we're like, okay, there's a Tella, this could be D-Machine. Oh wait, suddenly there's an Edge, this is changing everything. And that's been something that's been really dynamic and a little bit underrated about these flags, in my opinion. Yeah, I actually really want to, like, I'm, I'm tempted to re-watch this race later and see what the benefit to doing that one reaction uh, was right at the start uh, that Zilch did because that was 
that was really top. Like that was that was a good quick thinking play while while being up there. I think it's one of those things that's really, really hard to parse out because getting virus early is a really big benefit. But the problem there is that that divergence has kind of made it a little bit hard to compare because Zilch then came back down and basically ran up ordeals and got that magma key and that probably changed some of the uh, planning a little bit. Um, so it might be a little bit difficult to decide whether or not that was worth it based off of that, but it would be interesting to see. I like CNC going to exactly the spot that I go to do my egg grind. The exact square that I always land on. Choice. Well done. I like it there. I'm going to build a house there. Yeah, it's a great, great question. Uh, those, of you, uh, those of you at home, uh, whether or not your team, like, little peninsula south of Sylph Cave or team like two tiles over on the edge of the map that exists that you can land on for no reason. Uh, personally, I'm also on team two tiles you can land on, even though I know it's probably less efficient. So we'll see from there. I occasionally have anxiety about people in the world. I would not have that if I were on a cabin on the edge of a lake of fire. I would have other anxieties. Just trade them fully out. For being afraid of fire. It's like a campsite and the only way there is that like stone boat from Corona Mountain and Super Mario Sunshine that you have to control with flood that is impossible to control. Anyone who says they can do it is probably lying honestly in my opinion <laughs> but that's the only way you can get to and from this peninsula. <laughs> Just living in your little uh, cabin on the side of the lake that you have to get to and from that way. Instead of buying gas, you're buying like those uh, big like office water cooler jugs of water to get across the lake. Yeah, no, that would be great. I realize I'm 30 years too late for this observation, but uh, I just realized that there is not a normal boat in this entire game, is there? They trick you into thinking you're going to get a boat, and then they're like, nope, Leviathan, and then you don't get a boat. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh no, you can't take the boat to cross the river of Mag the, the Lake of Magma, and then realized, wait, hold on, you can't take anything really, in a sense, to cross Magma in this world except flying. This is like part of that like FF3, FF4 period where they really liked removing your forms of transportation at various points throughout the game. Sort of like how FF3 gives you like the airship right at the start and then immediately tells you, hey kids, go crash it into a mountain. Kids are like, absolutely, whatever you say. This is like why we like coming over to visit Grandpa. So Tella and kids uh, existing throughout time, and uh, Tella is a terrible driver of airships. Tella That's what we've fun. learned out of this. So yeah, while we're in double egg grind, now's also a great time to give a quick shout out to our behind the scenes crew, Moonblaze Wolf on the restream and GPS doing the tracking today. Both the uh, giving us a wonderful show today honestly this is i feel like i say this every time i'm on commentary but i really mean it this time this is a very very interesting seed and i actually don't know where this goes from here 100 percent. yeah i'm really curious uh i'm liking that we've got a difference of having kane another one of my pet favorite characters in this game uh in one of the parties and only one of the parties um suddenly forgetting oh that was must have been from dwarf castle of course uh. yeah and i feel like we would have a very interesting case study and in was doing that dwarf castle for that cane worth it if it weren't for the fact that cnc just doesn't know that rubicon's just there yet but cnc didn't get to be number two seed and didn't get to this point in this tournament not knowing to check mist cave so we might just have that planned out later so really, 
I wouldn't be surprised at any point if he just flies up, checks Miss Cave, finds the Rubicant there. So it's still a very tense situation. My money's on. Uh, my, my my hope right now is that uh, CNC is waiting for package, uh, and then once once with package in hand, we'll go and check Miss Cave and uh, find out horror of horrors uh, that he should have gone to uh, Miss Cave sooner. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. But I feel like the only thing about that in this case is what character could you possibly want from a package that would be worth sitting through the cutscene that adds to this party right now? Especially and I'm not. Grinding. Yeah, I was about to say, even pre grind, I'm not 100% sure there's many characters left that could be worth going through this. Maybe a Cecil, if you're planning on doing an edge grind, maybe replace the uh, Tella or figure something else out there and do a bit less of a grind. But, I mean, at this point in time, you're pretty much grinding for HP on forum more than anything else anyway, so you're not really going to lessen the grind by doing that either. No, yeah, there's nobody I would want on my team. Like, as much as I've made fun of this particular adventuring party, um... There, there's nobody on my team that I would, I would want to trade in. Like, I always feel safer with a Rosa as my white mage than I do uh, with, with the children. Um, but uh, I think we're going to grind to enough levels that, that her advantage is not super pronounced anymore. Absolutely, and I think that Rosa was coming to mind as like the only other possible candidate that you might sit through that package for if you're thinking that that added safety will help. Obviously, post-grind, probably these are the end parties we have, so hey, Edward fans, now's your chance. You're gonna see Edward at the Z fight. He probably will take a nap very quickly, but he will definitely be there. Yeah, I was thinking about Zilch being the, the you know, the master of the low-level strats, and my thought was is that I think that's still very item-heavy uh, that I just don't think we've got access to, right? Absolutely, and I think that's really, um, that's really to the point. Also, on the point of uh, Fu over in Edward, Fu does not exist in this flag set unless he's the starting character. So we couldn't get a Fu anywhere to replace that Edward. On Zilch's side, there's a few other characters you could consider going for there. Um, also, to answer a quick question from chat, why put Edge in the back row when he could one-shot in the front? So there is a glitch in this game called the back row glitch and what it is is when you equip a long range weapon to a character and then unequip it it knows to put on the little flag on the character that says okay they hit for full damage on all rows because they're they've got a long range weapon it doesn't have any way of removing that so as long as you do that that character will always hit for full damage from that back row as well i have a silly question uh, if you use a bow to give somebody a back row glitch, do you have to have armed them with arrows? I am about 90% certain the answer is yet. Uh, yes. Uh, hmm. But not 100% certain. Uh, centipede. Oh, we're stealing webs. Absolutely. So part of this flag set with the no J items is that you want a silk web. Silk web slow things way down. And Zeromus, you want to do way, way down in terms of speed. So uh, we've seen a lot of runners just taking this centipede fight if they don't find a silk web somewhere else to just quickly grab one, maybe two. Silk's going to grab a couple here. And that way they can just quickly do that slow on this and any other difficult boss and go from there. And I think that double silk web might actually be very useful here. Uh, I've just realized I have no idea what the agility growth of these children are because, uh, you know, in late game for me, playing this game as a child, they just weren't in my party at the end for some reason. That I can't say. Uh, do they get real fast? You know, I honestly don't remember 100% off the top of my head. I don't think they get particularly fast, but I think Porum get, or Palum gets in that like weird mid-range 
where you kind of are wishing he would be a bit slower, or you can just take him up to a higher level and get him to where you need to be. I'm pretty sure that's where it is. I think I think Palum is one of the better, yeah, 28 at nuke. So that would be like basically perfect agility. So yeah, yeah it's not too bad. All right, so we, we probably won't see uh, Zemus taking horrible advantage of our agility anchor being kind of outside of our control. Yeah, it won't be one of those like Daytona USA Zemuses where you're just sitting there waiting for the game over. Yeah, at the end of it, it'll be a relatively easy one. And Snaggle's just missing entirely on both sides here. So this is a pretty easy fight from here as long as they can do enough damage. I, they're high-fiving again. It's wild, given that, you know, they actually have taken a pretty different route through this entire seed. Uh, and I think they've high-fived three times now? Yeah, they keep coming back together, but here's the interesting thing to me. CNC did that grind, and then decided he was going to come up and do Wyvern. And to me, that can only mean one of two things. Go moon, because stay moon, right? either Moon or Mist Cave at this point in time. He knows that he oh. hasn't checked that boss yet because he would have stayed underground and just said, you know what, I have no reason to go fight Wyvern right now. I'll finish doing that if he was going to do underground checks. So he has to either be going here or going to the moon. And it's the first one through this fight pretty easily. Hey, Tiara's nice, right? Tiara's great, but I'm pretty sure that... I can't remember off the top of my head, isn't Tiara the uh, Black Mage item that Palum can't equip? Oh. Uh-oh. I think you might be right. Cool hack. Wonderful. It's 10 Wisdom. See, I, I'm one of those people who cannot remember which one is Wisdom and which one is Willpower. I'm assuming Wisdom is the Black Mage one. So... It's one of those things, it's like, yeah, I mean, if you get Porum to white, we're good. Nope, go into the moon on CNC side. This could be very bad for him. Okay, uh, let's try to conceive of a situation where this is this is great, actually. Uh, CNC goes and hits, Cave Bahamut gets part of the sword, and then hits Murasame and also gets the other part of the sword. Then it well, Cave Bahamut can't give a key item because the Cave Summon flag is it's not on summon... this. Yeah. Oh, right. For some odd reason, I keep thinking the Cave Bahamut is still, you know, on the moon. Yeah, it took me like two weeks into this tournament before I consistently remembered it is actually part of Cave Summon, so I 100% understand that. It's on the moon? It's a moon check. But I'm it's a summon, like a so it's part. a summon check. I'm making a protest sign. It says moon check. Make the evil wall spot in sealed cave part of K-Trap. <laughs> <laughs> now we're just... We're losing it. We've lost it. That's fine, because we are about to go into a, what is probably a very long CPU fight at this point. And... That's not... Great. <laughs> uh, we let's have a surprise uh, CPU grind. Did you think we were done grinding? No, it's the grind 2.0. Oh, there the quake is. Okay, so he's just going to let the globes go off at this point in time. So that's interesting. Gonna berserk up Edge and hope it doesn't hit Edge at this point. I think is his plan well, there. So that's interesting. Will Blink dodge Globe 99? No, I don't think so, unless I'm misremembering. I'm pretty sure that Globe 99 is uh, magic, technically, but I could be misremembering. I like that both of us, you, you, you played off of my flub, and so now we've downgraded Globe 199 to Globe 99. We're I couldn't remember if it was Globe 999 or Globe 199. <laughs> I wasn't about to ask. It's the Globe Express 39. I don't think that's right. Extremely old anime fans in the chat. Well, 
CMC is wow already through this fight, so doing a lot more damage than I expected him to. I kind of expected that to take a little bit longer, but also got very lucky that CPU just decided didn't like tell it. And there's an Avenger for that cane oh, as well, wow. so that's pretty big. Oh, that's great. That is, uh, we are definitely going hybrid strats. Uh, oh, just equipping that right off the bat. Wait, doesn't that do something bad at actual Zemus? Yeah, I think you need to swap it on Z because it does some weird shenanigans because Berserk is coded into this game in a very odd way. Okay. But, you know, that's not too much of a problem. You might as well just have it on for the rest of the fights. Well, we've got another bonk crashing the blue whale itself into uh, the crystal tower. So here is the big tense moment here. And this is also, here's here's the bad thing about this too, is um, Mirasame Altar is the one up at the top. And I feel like if DNC's best hope is to hit Legend Sword and Adamant, it almost would have been better if it was the Masamune altar so that he was compelled to do bottom up instead of top down. Right, because that Riven Room right now could like seriously hold an impossible amount of value. Because we're actually going yeah. to a really high concentration of key items in the remaining boss spots. Absolutely, and I think this is kind of like where we're at in the state of this race right now is, first of all, Zilt's doing a very standard strat on CPU, so that's going to be pretty good. This is a fine place for Bygen, by the way, because we have Quake, and Quake will knock those arms out every time. But... Woof. Um, Bygen punch hard. Look here. <laughs> How do you punch so hard with snakes for arms? Uh, did I just see a small child cast Meteo on a single basketball? Absolutely, because why not? Uh, Zilch, Zilch being the man of the people here today, going for the uh, Swag Rocks on the end of the CPU fight, but is through going to grab his Avenger, which is not useful to him because he doesn't have that cane. Uh, hashtag let Edward equip the Avenger. Uh, but... I think Here's gotta, where the ticking gotta, clock starts. We have to dart an Avenger to assert dominance. Absolutely. So yeah, this this looks a bit one-sided at the moment, I'll be honest. CNC is in a little bit of rough shape right now because we know that Zilch just needs to get through this bike and that he shouldn't have a problem with either. But that Z fight is far from guaranteed. 100% far from guaranteed. So... I would feel so much more yeah. comfortable with that cane than I would with that Edward. Absolutely. This is gonna come down to Zilch's execution on that Z fight. And Zilch is probably one of the best runners at execution on the Z fight, on the whole. But... You never know. We'll see. Yeah, I don't... I. Uh, I don't think I want to take the gamble that Zilch is going to do badly at Z. Uh, that, so that, that is a terrifying prospect. I am still racking my brain to find what, find a bizarre combinations of rewards that, that give CNC a running chance at, uh, at doing this. Because even if we get Legend Sword and Adamant, we have to go back down to, uh, the underground. Yeah, absolutely. And the only benefit to that is that we have this pass in hand, and both runners are going to end up using that pass. Zilch will exit out and almost certainly go and grab that airship and pass at that point. So, really, it's possible if we get this hit, like, specifically on the Ribbon Room and White Spear Altars, that this could still go in CNC's favor. We're really just waiting to see what's hidden behind this moon at this point. Do I remember correctly that literally no one has set foot in the Fae March? 
did CNC go down and check the free item. I'm pretty sure he went down and checked the free item. They did. Oh, okay. I don't think that... I don't remember what the bosses were. Nope. No Golbezes today. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I didn't see anyone there. Absolutely not. In that white spear altar, oh, there was... No. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, that is unfathomable. That is a crime. Both of those rooms should stay locked forever, sealed by a, a, a thousand-year seal. You know how earlier we were saying that we were getting all the free bosses out of the way and we had the chance for just a very cursed moon dive here? Well, yeah, but here I we are. I was not expecting that cursed moon dive to be faced by only one of the runners. Wait, that's fine. Oh, you oh, are looking he's, for Ruby. He's looking for Ruby, 100%. Interesting, if he's looking for Ruby and he doesn't find Ruby on this moon, does he leave and go and check other places? In which case... In which case, that's Could not... go to Mist Cave, we don't know. Yeah, that, I mean, right now it looks like gonna grab this Wyvern altar, uh, find out that it is not Ruby, reset, exit out, and presumably run straight to Mist Cave. Oh, that would be... Zilch would... Zilch is still ahead, no matter yes. what, in this case. But that would be close. This is one of those clearest, like, knowledge check... Like, sometimes you do a knowledge check and it just pays out really well, and that is what checking this cave was. Um, always oh, he's checking exiting this out. cave. Yep, yep. Oh, this is, this is, this is exciting. Uh, they are high-fiving once again, this time in space. The hardest place to high-five. Well, almost. You know, it really is impressive how often they're ending up in the exact same spot at the exact same time. Yeah. Answer the question from chat. I don't believe either found a cursed ring. And as far as how much quicker CNC's Z fight is, I don't know a bit, but not enough to make up the time here. Nope, he's going to go underground, and he's going to head to the tower instead. No! Doing a keyless tower, which I know is a move that we name after one of the runners, but I do not remember who. Well, we will find out here what is going to be awaiting him at the top of this tower, but uh, hey, we're we're on our way to this uh, fight here. I see uh, some flags in chat. Um, some people are big fans of Gundam Double Zeta, it would appear, uh, in honor of Gundam Pilot. Uh, there's some. They're asking a question. What is that question? I believe that question is Z question mark. And what that means in this particular case is we've got about 520 some odd sprites, more than that, possibly over 540 at this point. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. Sprites we can put here because we cannot move Zeromus. Moving Zeromus is bad. And so we are about to ask the question, whose butt are we going to kick today? I have heard variations. Will the butt be cute? Will there be a butt? Scala no longer remembers the number, which means that the number is high. We have found Miss Cave! I do not wish... I, I cannot imagine uh, coughing Chocobo's feelings right now, but... Uh, I would know that I had made him, that, that, that this is a check that somebody else might have made. Definitely, but this is very close getting into the Z fight. This is not going to be very far apart, and Zilch has the probably significantly slower Zeromus fight just due to not having that Avenger Kane, in this case having an Edward instead who's just not going to be able to contribute much of anything outside of hiding and acting as a chemist if something goes wrong. So this is still a fairly 
tight race, plus every possibility that one of our runners either slips up, gets a bad roll some point in time. This is still a very tight race at this point. Yeah, even though they've grinded, they've both ground so much, I guess, not grinded, uh, that's still, boo. Uh, uh, that's still a pretty low hit point total to have inside of a party. Uh, so a bad Big Bang can really do, do you in. You know, this sprite makes me think that we need, like, a Super Mario World ROM hack, like, wacky flag, and it just turns every single boss into Big Boo in honor of, basically... <laughs> oh, well, what if every boss was named Boomus, and uh, you don't get to know what, what name they are, either? It's just a mystery until they attack which boss it is you're fighting. Halloween costume wacky flag. Hashtag feedback and ideas. <laughs> I think I see Scala with a with a thinking Koopo in there, and uh... all right, we've got a, We've got a we've got a final boss fight to commentate. We absolutely do, and really, this is a very interesting Z fight to talk about on both sides. We are going to see this first big bang off. I believe it has already been nerfed, probably with the silk web over on Zilch's side. CNC has the silk web to do the same. Tell gonna go down already anyways. And it looks like Zilch might be going for straight up reflect strats at this point in time. I'm not sure if that edge is swinging right now, but I think he's just darting some drain spears and yeah, reflecting. So there is a chance that he won't be for that hybrid strat at all, in which case that'll shave a lot of time off the Z fight as long as it's safe at this point. Yeah, I'm a little... I, I, that Tella is probably not going to get picked back up. Um, okay, thank goodness. I thought for a moment there that Eddie was about to pick Tella up and I was just going to see him look like a fool. Um, I'm expecting to see maybe another dart or two, and that'll be it from our, our physical damage. Yeah, definitely. And to sort of explain real quick for those in chat who don't know what reflect strats are like, because this is uh, something very important to describe. So Zeromus has technically two HP pools, more or less, to sort of give him more health than he should be able to have based on the way the game is programmed. And the way that works is, at some point in time, he counterattacks and refills his health. If you are reflecting spells like this, you never trigger the counterattack and he never refills his health, so you basically fight half HP's aromas. So it can be faster just as long as you can actually chew through all that HP. This big bang going out, ooh, Porum and, Pal or Porum and Edward going down in this case. Might still be fine with Chemist Edge, but that is going to take a little bit of that damage off, and this is a bit of a damage race so that might not be the best thing to have happen right now. Yeah, I'm impressed, actually. We've had a, a, a sort of rough big bang on both sides now, because we had Edge going down on uh, CNC's side as well uh, pretty early on. So this is uh, this is Zeromus reminding us that uh, life is in fact folly, and all of our plans are destroyed immediately upon contact with the enemy. Absolutely, and CNC having a little bit of an issue in that Porum going down as well is not great. You pretty much want to be able to heal in this Aromas fight, um, which actually, before I said that out loud, sounded a lot less obvious than it is. But I don't know, I almost feel like this is a very fast Aromas over on CNC's side as well. Yeah, I'm, uh, oh, that's it. Did he get the kill with that dart there? I that was think so. That is some good HP counting there. Zilch taking the win with a time of 110.33. What a what an impressive race too. And I believe we are joined by today's winner Zilch. Uh, GG's on a very very well run race. Thank you. Uh, did a dude? Are we correct? Did you do the finishing blow with that dart? Is that what we saw? I mean, it was either that or I tipped Zeromus and we have a very painful recovery, but uh, yeah. 
definitely went with the yellow dart. Extremely cinematic swag move. Very good. Yeah, I wasn't sure white was going to make it off in time, and I was, thought I was in the threshold, so I was like, yep, here we go. <laughs> So I want to hop back a little bit in this race for you. Um, you'd seen the Wyvern, you had the Darkness Crystal in hand, and then you find the Rubicon at Mist Cave. What went through your head at that moment? Um, was that my go mode, or was it Wyvern? I can't remember. I believe Rubicon was your go mode. It might have been the other way around, thinking about it, but I was... No, I think, you're, I think it was Ruby. Yeah, at that yeah. point, I'm like, well, I've got an edge. I've got two casters. I've got nothing else really. I mean, Tella, whatever. Uh, I figured grind and go at that point. Um, yeah, that was pretty much it. It's like, we got the sirens. We can cry to make it a little faster. Um, yeah, grind and go. There was no slingshot option in there. It, it obviously absolutely worked out in the end, but. Uh... Did you consider trying to go for a character run to find someone to maybe replace everyone's favorite bard? Um, it crossed my mind, but I mean, with two casters, one of which is Talon, I mean, you can get through the Z fights. Granted, the agility situation was a little sketchy, but I was kind of more worried about not having tier threes, but I didn't want to take the time to go shopping. Um, but yeah, two casters and then an edge to add a little more damage with darts was... It's, that's usually enough to get through the Z fight, so I figured it's not worth the time potentially finding a dud character. Yeah, I was watching you during the boss fight throwing uh, throwing those Cure 2s onto edge and going, huh, I wonder where all the Cure 3s were. Yeah, I don't know if CNC found them, but uh, I certainly didn't. <laughs> I was hoping they'd be not. in Troya on my way out, but I did not see any. I think that I think that everyone is working with very low level chemistry right now. Yeah. And I spent most of my money in drain spears anyway, so there's that. Yeah, I'm always happy to see a, a pile of drain spears, the classic ability to uh, to uh, uh, convert money into damage. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they would be enough to get it so where Edge could one-shot eggs, but maybe I should have put the black belt on instead of the ninja shirt, but he was, he was still a ways off. Oh, the tower key. It was in Zot, along with a Cecil. <laughs> well, you know, Avenger in the Sea. Apparently there's a Cecil too, then. As long as there's no crystal swords, you'll find plenty of Cecil. I saw you pull that lightsaber in Baron and was like, ah, there's definitely not a Cecil, but once again, I am often wrong. Wait, I mean, I see CNC found a cane somewhere, I'm guessing Zot, but... Uh, cane was at a dwarf castle. A dwarf, okay. So was Zot just dud? Oh no, Zot was a Cecil. Okay. Yeah, we we didn't uh, Cecil in the tower key, and I'm only seeing that in your spoiler log. Actually, uh, no one decided to go up Zot, much to my chagrin. Uh, as I I like. I did rate the treasury. Like That's got to count for something. Yeah. Got a yeah, pile of dragon helmet. Rating. The oops, all secondary edge gear. That's not a weapon. <laughs> treasury. There was the one ninja sword in there, right? I know I had one. So. I believe so. That yeah. Wasn't bad. I uh, almost wiped to uh, King and Queen, so that was also fun. Uh, King and Queen got their highest kill count of the seeds that I've seen so far, which, you know, props to them. Luckily, they killed the person that got experience regardless. So, made it through. Yeah, actually, I want to ask about that, too, is that, you know, you saw that King and Queen and just instantly went for it, um, which, you know, experience is always great. But what did you think when you saw the really, really well-loaded back of water you passed there? <laughs> Had like the ninja shirt I mean, and That everything. was why I was doing the fight. The experience at that spot isn't great. Um, and the twins, um, bluff casted twin, or bluff casted uh, uh, twin, yeah, can uh, get you through most early fights pretty easily. 
So I was kind of just hoping to find something in that those four chests because they're I think they're pretty high up in the looting distribution. So it was a you know a little bit of EXP plus good loot. Figured it was worth the time investment since I was already parking um, there anyway. I didn't realize how sketchy that fight would be, but that might have been more like sketchy than the Z fight now that I think about it. <laughs> uh, I would like to note that in 1 hour, 50 minutes, and 36 seconds, Coffee and Chocobos has also completed the seed. We are at 1 and 1. We will be having another race. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, are you going to Tomorrow, be same tomorrow? time. Ooh. So, excited for that. I made it to game three. That's the initial goal. Right, goal, see what happens. I'm hoping for more vanilla bar Baron key. If you guys, if you can keep that up, that's the energy we need. I want no more Tellas in the seed. Don't want to think about D machines. Definitely happy to see the edge of the seed. Definitely. And uh, just sort of one last real question I had was um, when you got to the top of Mount Ordeals, you saw that magma key. Were you tempted to go underground at any point in time or was that something where you were just always going to kind of like just keep checking over world checks at that point? Um, I wanted to just, I think I only had Aaron in left at that point and I figured... I had Virus on Palum, um, and that was enough to get through the overworld pretty quickly. So I was gonna just wait a little bit for that. And then Baron Key came and say, all right, we'll just continue along. I think I also had Edge at that point too. So yeah, um, I wasn't in any rush to get underground. But at that point, then Key Items, because I think I would still need Legend and Adamant. So the chances of me finding both of them free in the underground aren't that high. So I figure maybe I get the pan or something to make it a little better. While well, I checked all the bosses above ground, also knowing you know, Demis was in Baron, so an extra check out of that. Definitely. Trek, uh, did you have any other questions for Zilch? Um, I did not. I thought this was just an incredibly well-run race. Uh, I was... I would never have been able to beat Z with the uh, the final party you had. I am terrible with the children and with the old man. Uh, and I don't really... I recognize that Edward is a powerful character with many useful abilities, but when I walk into a Z fight with one, I feel like I have failed. Um, so this was just a, a tour de force, and uh, just my compliments. Thank you. And uh, even with C and C missing out on... Uh finding that ruby early still made it within five minutes which is very impressive yeah considering he like face checked the full moon so ggs to him and looking forward to our match tomorrow absolutely well once again ggs and thank you for uh, joining us for this interview and thank you very much for a very well run race and a clinic on how to run a good sea fight as well thanks for the commentary restreaming and tracking and hope everyone has a great day All right, I believe we're going to try and get CNC in now, and there he is, Coffee and Chocobos, with a very well run, but still going to a game three here. GG's. Thank you. Uh, I've got to ask, because we were sitting here, of course, uh, being able to, to see both races at once. Uh, what were your thoughts when you found Ruby in Mist that late in the seed? So, initially, I had checked the mist and I saw I got the earth crystal out of it and wanted to go loot the treasury didn't think much of it until much later when I was diving the moon and I saw Golbez at the white spear altar and I, I thought in the back of my head didn't I see Golbez in the mist cave spot and that was last night's seed mm -hmm. I and just I, watched that race <laughs> yeah, and, and the light bulb went on as I hit the top of tower, and I said, did I really pull a bonehead move and not check Mist Cave? And lo and behold. Yeah, we were sitting here watching you going like, oh, goodness, when is he planning to hit Mist Cave? There's, there's got to be some galaxy-brained, like, mega plan. Uh... No, that's mostly uh, wrong side of my 30s brain. 
So I want to sort of back things up a little bit there to way, way back before then. Um, sort of more towards the start of the seed. Um, well, actually not towards the start, sort of mid-game when you went underground and you did all of those checks. Were you at any point tempted to just sort of skip that underground and kind of keep checking other places first? Or was that just always going to be your plan from there is go underground, check that dwarf castle character and just go from there? Well, yeah, I wanted to check Dwarf Castle because it's uh, it's a pretty easy character, especially when you got uh, Edge loaded completely down with Ninja Swords and a Zeus Gauntlet, and Palom with Quake. That that's not a, not a difficult uh, check to do, and it's a quick character, quicker than going up Zod and dealing with that anyway. Um, and I got the pan out of it, so I wanted to see if I could turn that into two key items, and it was only one. So at that point, I decided to just go ahead with my grind and take out the objectives that I knew, which were the, the Wyvern and Baron Basement and the uh, the two spots on the moon. Yeah, I don't think either of you found either side of the uh, the Forge objective. Um, I, I wasn't paying close enough attention to where those were inside of the spoiler log because I was sitting there rooting for a completely divergent objective uh, possibility. Uh, when you started doing underground checks. Yeah, it sure seems like Forge is infrequent in these flags. If, if it if it happens to come up, it's because you found a piece early and you chase that instead of trying to do a boss hunt, uh, or just both pieces come up and, uh, and the opportunity arises as soon as you get underground to, to knock that objective out. And I, I like when that happens because it does create a an, um, an atmosphere of divergence where you have to pick one of those last objectives and one of them could be really mean or one of them could be buried behind another uh, gating item. Actually, that is something I want to ask you about. Um, speaking of sort of the boss hunt part of it, uh, when you went up to the moon, you basically did the Mirasame altar and then face checked all the bosses and didn't go for any of them. Is that something where you were possibly considering going and checking those moon bosses or was that always just going to be a quick boss check and go from there uh it was going to be a face check and a, a possible save scum i left a save up there in case nothing on earth turned up anything i knew i needed to check tower i knew to, i knew i hadn't looked at the uh sealed cave yet and well missed cave <laughs> Yeah, I loved I loved you all having the Luca key the entire time, burning a hole in your pocket, and absolutely no one ever wanted to check it. It's one of those rude spots where uh, Palum, as the hero, is a slow, um, slow but not too slow anchor, and I had Tella, who was not exactly fast, and and Porum is a uh, was even a little slower than Palum, especially with the ninja hat and. Uh, crystal ring so mostly edge would be getting a whole lot of turns and that boss can be rude depending on what it is yeah and all of the easy bosses were right at the start of the seed our anxiety was growing the entire time watching one easy boss after another show up yep uh the king queen eblon in the waterfall and the uh kaipo guards in ordeals Yeah, definitely. Um, Trick, did you have any other questions for Coffee and Chocobos today? Ah, I'm I am all set. I'm I am deeply satisfied by so much free enterprise. I I just want more though. Strangely enough, uh, so I am excited to watch every darn race uh, in the remainder of this round. Absolutely. Uh, CNC, did you have any other thoughts for us tonight? Uh, yeah, anybody got a big red marker so I can write check Mist Cave on my monitor? I <laughs> uh, got a Sharpie. It's not red. Does that, does that work? Uh, it might. I, was like, right. I, I got some mascara you can borrow. I, you can paint on the screen with that. Hey, anything. As long as it's right in my face. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, GG's again, and thank you very much for a wonderful race today, and we'll see you tomorrow in Game 3. Yep, um, thank you very much, and uh, thank you to the restreamers, trackers, and, um, and our commentary team. Excellent, as always. Thank you, and uh, thank you again for joining us. Mm -hmm. Take and care. And with that...
I believe we're reaching the end of our stream for today here. I think so, and it looks like we are going to be raiding another race. Is that correct? Absolutely. So we're going to be sending you over to the Free Enterprise channel for a Stone Dingley versus Prof Corey game three of four, <laughs> uh, which is a thing that's occurring. Uh, remember, once we get over there, of course, as usual, no spoilers. And again, a quick shout out and thank you to our behind the scenes team, Moonblaze Wolf on the restream and GPS doing the tracking. And again, thank you for joining us today, as well as thank you, Trick, for your wonderful co-commentary. It has been a delight. You are uh, an excellent partner to c commentate with. Um, this is absolutely incredible every time. Uh, thank you. All right, and we'll catch you all on the next race. Have a good afternoon, everyone.